In today's lesson, we're going to go through the third index law and also when the index is zero. So the third index law is all about raising a power by another power. So all it is, is if we have um, an index in here and we're raising it by another power, all we do is we multiply the powers. Okay. So that's all it, all it is. The fourth index law, this one over here is refers to the zero index and it is pretty simple but some people tend to get it confused so anything that's raised to the power of zero always equals to one now it only equals to one to the thing that's actually raised to a zero so if i actually wrote 3a to the power of zero this is actually not going to equal to one it's going to equal three because that's still going to be a three and it's going it's multiplying a zero and a zero means one so we're still going to get a three. So be very careful. The power of zero only applies to what it's with. Now, if I want to make this whole thing equal to one, what I can do is I can make three a all raised to the power of zero. Now that will definitely be one. So let's go through some examples that talks about the um, third and fourth index laws. So here is the index law where we actually, uh, well, is, here's an index where we have to raise to an another power. So we've got x5, x raised to the power of 5, that is raised again to the power of 4. So all we basically do is multiply the powers together. So that's going to be x to the power of 20. Why is that? That's because when we say x5 raised to the power of 4, it's x times uh, x to the power of 5 multiplied by x to the power of 5, and we do this four times. And remember, if you remember the first uh, index law, we say that if you raise, um, if you multiply indices with the same power, all you do is add their power. So technically we've actually got five plus five plus five plus five, that's going to equal to 20, but there's obviously, this is a short way of doing it. All right, over to the next one. We've got, uh, three, nothing's happening to three. So we'll just write three down and that's y to the power of five raised to the power of two. So five times two is going to be y 10. Okay. Next one over here. Everything in here is raised to the power of zero, so that's just going to give us one. Nice and easy. Now, everything in the bracket raised to the power of zero is going to give us one, but there's a negative on the outside that's unaffected, so that negative is still there, and that's going to be negative one. Now, over here, we've got two y zero. Now, two times y to the power of zero is the same as saying two times one, just like I explained before. So this actually gives us the number two. The second part, 3y all to the power of 0 is going to be 1. So 2 take 1 and our answer is 1. Some slightly more difficult ones. We've got um, some powers raised here. So that's, we're going to have x, 2 times 3 is 6, times x, we always do brackets first, um, 3 times 5 is 15. And then we're using the first law, we just add the powers x to the power of 21. Down here, we can get rid of this bracket first. So um, we have m at the top, 3 times 4 is 12, divided by m7. Using the second law, 12 take away 7, m is going to be to raise to the power of 5. And that's our answer there. And last one, uh, it's a bit of a mixture. So uh, let's deal with the numbers first. 4 times 3, at the top we've got 12. And then x squared times x cubed is going to give us x5 because they're multiplying. And down at the bottom, we still have 6x to the power of 5. What we do here is we're going to subtract. So 5 take 5 is going to give us 0. So, uh, look, so that's going to be x to the power of 0. And 12 divided by 6 is going to be 2. Now x to the power of 0 is going to be 1. So 2 times 1, that's just going to be the number 2. And that's all there pretty much is to it.